Um, let me first introduce a person who has stood up and paid attention and is standing up for us, the Honorable Linda Rosenthal. So, uh, thank you very much um, to Al Appleton, Cooper Union Institute for Sustainable Design, and all the various sponsors and co-sponsors uh, for hosting this important and informative event. Um, I just have one question. Are you scared yet? <laughs> Yeah. Because when I heard all of this information and I read different articles that were supplied by uh, the people I met with, it's like, oh my God, this is scary. This is something that nobody wants to acknowledge out there. And I feel that as an elected member of the New York State Legislature that it was my duty to do something about it. You know, I, I used to work for Congressman Jerry Nadler. Um, some years ago, and I went through the whole 9-11 experience uh, with that office and with the residents of Lower Manhattan, where the head of the EPA said the air is safe to breathe. Um, now, as a state legislator, I see that um, in the S guys for fracking, there's no health study included. And then I, I saw courtesy of the, of the doctor that um, the DEC says we want to, to verify that they do not pose an unanticipated risk. So you're verifying something you, you believe without proof that what you believe is true. So, you know, I went into this business very idealistic about government protecting its citizenry. Um, I still believe it, but I think not everybody is down with that mission. But I am. So that is why. I, I, I heard the alarm bells and I said, well, I will have to introduce something in the New York State Assembly. And I'm, I'm fortunate to have um, found a co-sponsor in the New York State Senate. Uh, who is uh, Senator Diane Savino? She hails from Staten Island, which has a, a large, uh, a, a large radon problem. So just for that reason alone, it's good that she's the co-sponsor. Um, okay, so I'm I'm going to run through um, some of the provisions in in the bill, which is uh, Bill A sixty eight sixty three, and. Um, Okay, so first this bill requires the Bureau of Environmental Radiation Protection under the Department of Health, um, along with consultation with the Department of Environmental Conservation and the Public Service Commission, to create a compliance assurance system to monitor levels of radon and its uh, progeny, not daughters, at each city gate location in real time online monitoring as well as periodic physical inspection. It would prohibit local gas distribution entities from building new or additional storage facilities to mitigate radon levels. It would prohibit local gas distribution entities from passing any harmful effects of mitigation to other regions in the state. It requires that if levels of radon monitored at any city gate entrance exceed 1.0 picocuries per liter, but is less than 2.0 picos per liter, the local distribution entity shall implement a radon mitigation program to bring levels down below one picocuries per liter. And importantly, most importantly, requires that if levels of radon monitored at any city gate entrance exceed four picocuries per liter of air, which the EPA has said is the action level, over one hour period, then the entity, Con Ed, National Grid, whatever, shall shut off the acceptance of natural gas until levels are below that action level for at least six hours. And that would protect us. And, and there's also a provision for um, commencing civil actions if any of, any of uh, 
the distribu distributors of uh, natural gas um, do not comply with the provisions here. So this is our legislative approach to this because, I mean, there are so all sorts of actions taking place on all different levels of um, the community, um, within government, outside of government, uh, all of you are involved with, all the experts are involved with. But this is our legislative approach, which not only do we want to pass the bill, but it is a great way to um, talk about the issue. It's a, it's a good you know, centerpiece when you want to say, what can we do? This is one of the things we can do. So the way I talk about this with any bill, for example, I have a bill that I just introduced um, to have label, requires labeling of all GMO Foods. So, you know, this is also something that the public needs to be educated about, although they're far ahead on GMO um, knowledge than about radon knowledge. So, what we need to do is educate um, my colleagues, um, just the ones not wearing the wires. Um, but I don't know who those are. No, I know who those are. Um, okay, so we have to educate my colleagues in the Assembly and the Senate. Now, the way you do that, for example, with the GMO bill, is the activists have, um, have told the, the people who are concerned about this, and this is the way to do it, you inundate people with emails. You inundate them with phone calls. You inundate them with snail mail and you just spread the word that this is an important bill for them to sign on to. They should co-sponsor this bill. The bill number, once again, is A6863 in the Assembly, and in the Senate, it's S4921. And if you don't know who your legislator is, you can just look it up on the websites of the Assembly and the Senate, and also tell your friends and your family and anyone you know throughout the state that they should get their representative to sign on as co-sponsor of the bill. Sure, it's um, 6863, you put an A before it, A6863, and in the Senate, S4921. Now the importance of getting a lot of sponsors is it shows that there is support. Now we're close to the end of session, maybe six weeks left, and this is a complicated bill, and things that are complicated and of great importance generally get a very thorough vetting, but also slowing down process in the legislature. So we have to work our hardest in this short time period to get a lot of sponsors, to show the governor, to show the mayor, to show everybody who looks at bills like this and sees, oh my goodness, there's a lot of support for this in the legislature. So that's. That's one of the key things um, that's, that's great for you to do, is to um, talk about this, um, get your, your, uh, your people to support it. And that's, um, that's actually what I have to say about supporting the bill. I'll, I'll give it to David, and he can talk about more general areas of support. And then, if you'd like, I can come back and talk about other, other parts of it.
Actually, I encourage you to get emotional. I think mm -hmm. the prospect of right on with your coffee is one I can certainly get very emotional about. <laughs>